Hello and welcome to day nine, lecture number nine. We continue our study of Africa and uh, let's take a look at the map. You do a little review, see what you remember. Hopefully you remember it all. And there's Africa. Okay, we started out looking up here at the northern tier, the northern tier where we find these countries. And you know this one is Egypt. What's the capital? What's capital? Think about it. Think about it. Start to the sea. Yes, it is Cairo. Cairo. Uh, Egypt, great place to go visit. The longest river in the world is the Nile, that is exactly right, goes through Egypt and up to Lake Victoria down here. Uh, we learned about Libya. Libya has a civil war going on. You don't really want to go there. We talked about Tunisia, Tunisia, the only democracy in North Africa. Uh, talked a little bit about Algeria, Algeria, the largest country in Africa. Talked about Morocco. Who controls Western Sahara? Western Sahara. And we gave you the little remembering aid. Western Saharans, <laughs> Western Saharans make all Tunisians like Egypt. Western Saharans, the M in make is for Morocco. All, the A in all is for Algeria. Tunisians. The L in like is for Libya, Egyptians is Egypt. Okay, so Western Saharans make all Tunisians like Egypt. If that helps you, great. If it doesn't help you, just memorize them anyway. That is best for you. Uh, let's take a look at some of the water around there because we have to know that too. What's this long one with the long name? That is correct. That is the Mediterranean. What is this thing down here? Yep, that is the Red Sea. What connects the Red Sea and the Mediterranean? That is the Suez Canal right there, Suez Canal. What is the ocean over here? You said Atlantic, you are correct. So this must be the Indian Ocean over here. Over here you can just barely see one of the most dangerous places in the world. That is the Persian Gulf the Persian Gulf. Not a very good looking P there, is it? <laughs> okay. The one up here it looks like Casper the Friendly Ghost. That is the Caspian Sea. Here we have the Black Sea. Here we have the Adriatic. So this must be the Aegean. And connecting the Black Sea and the Aegean Sea is the Strait of the Dardanelles, right through there. So hopefully you can remember all of the, oh, we got this one over here too. Yep, Strait of, starts with G, starts with G-I-B, Gibraltar, the Strait of Gibraltar. Okay, good. All right, hopefully you got those remembered. Uh, you haven't got them yet to study them. We're gonna look at three countries today. We are going to look at the Democratic Republic of the Congo, right down here, and Liberia and Sierra Leone. Okay, Liberia and Sierra Leone. Um, let's start with, uh, with the Democratic Republic of the Congo. You can see it is a big country. It is the fourth largest country in, uh, in Africa. Um, it is a country with a whole lot of problems. Uh, I think what we're gonna do, let's have, uh, let's take a look at one of those Geography Now videos that I, that I introduced to you in the assignments. Um, they've got a, a good one on the Democratic Republic. We won't look at the whole thing. Uh, the Democratic Republic was established by, uh, well, the area had always been there, okay? Lots of different tribes there. It was colonized by uh, King Leopold of Belgium. I mentioned him the other day when we were talking about Africa. Uh, he was a rather brutal guy. 
and uh, he was looking for a way to make some money. And uh, he decided he could do it by grabbing a big chunk of the Congo. We talked about the three advances, technological and medical advances that made it possible. That was the machine gun, quinine, and steam power. So he was the first guy to really go in and grab a big chunk of uh, Africa. Well, this set off a huge land race. All of the European powers decided they also had to grab a chunk of Africa or they would be left behind. And uh, so you saw the partitioning of Africa. Uh, only two countries uh, did not become colonies of some European power. Uh, that was Ethiopia over here on the East Coast and Liberia, which we will talk about uh, in just, just a moment. So let's uh, pull up that little uh, Geography Now video. And uh, we'll, sh we'll look at just a couple minutes of that. No, no you don't. The DRC is a large country located in the Central African area bordered by nine other countries and is the second largest country in Africa after Algeria and the largest in Sub-Saharan Africa. The country has 10 provinces and the city province of Kinshasa, even though the constitution mandates that there are like 26 provinces, but they haven't really gotten around to that. The capital Kinshasa is right across the mighty Congo River from Brazzaville, the capital of the Republic of Congo, making the two cities the world's closest capitals. Kinshasa is a huge city with millions of people and a weird 25 foot tall statue of the former leader Kabila that was constructed by North Koreans and has a suspiciously Kim Jong-il type of body. Side note, North Korea has a weird industry of manufacturing and exporting dictator statues. Unfortunately, there are no bridges that connect the two cities, so in order to cross, you will either have to take a ferry, which can be incredibly crowded and sketchy. Some tourists that visit Brazzaville go so far as to charter flights that go to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and then to Kinshasa to avoid the hassle, even though the distance is literally less than seven kilometers or four miles apart. When you look at the DRC's borders, you'll notice that the further west you go, the land kind of funnels into this incredibly narrow panhandle known as the Bakongo province. This area just barely touches the Atlantic Ocean with a 32 kilometer wide coast and the town of Muanda that extends all the way to the seaport of Banana. That's right, they named the seaport Banana. However, don't let Banana fool you. Most cargo ships and freight vessels do not stop over here and in order to receive bulk shipments, all cargo must travel up the Congo River to the ports on either Boma or Mitadi. Mitadi being the bigger one since they have a direct train line and highway that goes straight to Kinshasa. These two small ports are the main lifeline of the DRC's international trade sector. Speaking of which, only about 2% of the roads are paved and due to the terrain of the Congo Basin, building roads and railways has always been a little difficult. Water transport has always been the dominant means of moving around as nearly two thirds of the entire country is navigable by rivers and creeks. In the south of the Katanga province, you have the Congo Pedicle or the Katanga Boot, another narrow corridor that protrudes into Zambia, almost cutting it in half. The reason why this happened all had to do with the Belgian King Leopold II and the Berlin Conference. Basically, Basically, he claimed the borders to ride along the Luapula River and the watershed between the Zambezi and Congo to be the southernmost borders of the country. But the whole thing was still a little hazy and unclear, so he invited the King of Italy to draw a straight line and then end it all, which the Africans had absolutely no consultation in. in fact, the reason why the country's domain is so big is mostly because King Leopold somehow ended up convincing the summit to allot him the entire area, widely unexplored and in return, making it a free state with open trade policies and no direct sovereign allegiance, but rather as his own personally controlled state. Basically, the entire country became his own twisted, messed up African playground. And that's where things got really messy. We'll talk about in the demographics, but first, we have to discuss the... Now, the one thing you have to understand is that the DRC is one of, if not probably the world's most resource-rich yet economically untapped and mismanaged country in the world. The country has everything, and yet so much is not being done. First, Okay, let's uh, skip up to another section. He goes through some boring stuff there. Yeah, right about here the east and southeast parts of the country. In terms of statistics, the DRC is pretty underdeveloped and economically disadvantaged. Typically, the country ranks within the bottom 10 countries with the lowest GDP index scores. Only a little over 10% of the country even has access to electricity and running water. On top of that, the country is scattered with thousands of small tribal villages not even documented or even charted on maps. See how many you can find on Google Earth. Make it into a game. Yes, up. Uh, three degrees of latitude, 24 degrees longitude. Uh. 
<laughs> also, due to the fact that the DRC was a huge provider of slaves that were dispersed around the world during the Atlantic and Arab slave trade years, it's highly contested that many modern dances and music styles across the world can be stemmed from this very region since the slaves incorporated their traditional styles while performing. Calypso, jazz, reggae, rumba, merengue, and so many more all have roots possibly from Africa. Many speculate from the Congo area as well. Now we have to get a little controversial. Now, I'm not going to give you the whole story. I'll let John Green do that in this video right here. He does a great job. By the way, John, if you're ever free, let's hang out sometime. Waffles are on me. In a nutshell, things got pretty messed up and the exact numbers are hard to calculate, but it's speculated that during the reign of terror of King Leopold, about half of the entire country's population of 20 million were killed. Furthermore, almost immediately after independence, things got messed up again and regimes fought and Mobutu took over and renamed the country Zaire. Then when he died, more craziness ensued and the Congo wars erupted, sometimes referred to as the African World War, sucking in every neighbor nation around them and nearly five and a half million people died, making it the most deadly conflict after World War II. Wow, really? My textbook doesn't say anything about that. That's because your school, like many others in the Western world, does not care about Africa and it should! On top of that, internal conflict was bad enough. Both the Kasai and Katanga areas had a short secessionist movement, and for a brief three years, Katanga even became a breakaway state back in the 60s. Then another group attempted in 2013 called Mai Mai Bakata Takakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakakak
Uh, it's a fascinating story. I mean, it took decades for them to make this, uh, make this happen. But they banned slavery throughout the English Empire. Uh, this was uh, well before America banned slavery. Um, about 800,000 slaves were freed. Many of them made their way to Sierra Leone. Some of them that arrived there had uh, decent education and had, uh, had a little bit of money. And these became the leaders of Sierra Leone. Uh, in fact, even today, there's a little tension between the tribes that were already there and the newcomers, because it's not like these, these freed slaves came into a place where nobody else was. Uh, so there's still a little tension there. Sierra Leone, like the Congo, has a lot of natural resources. However, they have totally mismanaged everything, and uh, uh, Sierra Leone is, is pretty much a mess. So let's take a look at Liberia. Now, in Liberia, this was settled by freed slaves from the United States. Uh, this goes way back to 1816. Um, there was a, a group of, uh, of Americans, mostly in the North, the American Colonization Society, that decided they needed to do something with uh, all the free blacks. Now, not all blacks uh, were, in America, were slaves. Uh, some had purchased their own freedom or were, had been born to freed slaves. But just because the Americans were against slavery didn't mean that they still didn't have considerable amount of racism about them. And they just really didn't want these, uh, these black Africans, even if they were freed, and some of them were educated, uh, they didn't want them there. So they figured, all right, where can we put them? And uh, they decided, well, let's send them back to Africa. And so this society started putting together excur excursions, that's the wrong word, uh, convoys to take the Africans back to a place, back to what comes to be known as Liberia. Um, their uh, first group uh, got there in 1822. So it took them a while to get everything organized. Got there in 1822. Now, some of these were educated. Uh, some of these uh, people actually had a little bit of money uh, when they got there. Uh, we tend to take with us the traditions that we grow up with. And uh, some of them actually enslaved uh, some of the Africans that were already there when they landed. So not a wonderful thing. Uh, between 1822, when the first group arrived, and the American Civil War, uh, about 18,000 freed or freeborn black uh, people uh, left and came to Liberia. Again, they had the education. Some of them had a little bit of money. And they became the leaders of Liberia. Um, even today, there is tension between the descendants of those freed slaves and the descendants of the Africans that already lived there. Uh, there's always been kind of a kinship between Liberia and the United States. Uh, they named their capital Monrovia after uh, James Monroe, who was uh, president when they were setting the, uh, the colony up there. Um, they were very supportive of the United States during World War II. Uh, United States poured a ton of money in there, uh, building uh, Navy bases and uh, air bases to hunt German submarines, among other things. Um, it's always been kind of a, a closeness between the two countries. Uh, then everything fell apart. Uh, 1980, uh, we had a military coup there, and that set off a, over a decades, a couple decades of civil wars and revolutions, and just totally screwed up the economy. Uh, it wasn't until 2005 they finally had democratic elections, uh, and then, then the Ebola virus came through and uh, killed lots of Liberians. That was uh, like 2013 to 2016. It is an extremely poor country. Most of what they do is uh, agriculture and mining. They do have gold and diamonds and iron ore there. Uh, population of uh, 5 million, but 83% of them live below the poverty line. Uh, not, not a place that you really want to, uh, to live. Okay, so there you have the Congo, you have Sierra Leone, 
you have uh, Liberia. Uh, tomorrow we'll uh, continue. Let's see, what's up for tomorrow? Oh, Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, and a place you've never heard of, Somaliland. So until tomorrow, have a great and wondrous day.